found a body and a car in a pond. The truck belongs to Jeff Shepard, who disappeared three years ago. He was first reported missing in March of 2018 from Scott County, Tennessee. 602 LJC. Unfortunately, this is not the first case that we've come into where somebody goes missing after a broken heart. Come to find out, Jeff got in a fight with his girlfriend that night and he threw around, you know, a couple of words that says, you know, I'm going to go commit suicide. March 12, 2018, Jeff Anthony Shepard was last seen leaving this bar. Jeff left here in his 1984 Ford F-150, license plate 602 LJC, and that was the last he was ever seen or heard from again. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jared. Nikki. Nikki, pleasure to meet you. It's Amelia. Hi, Amelia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nikki. Good, good. Hi. I'm Doug. Yeah. We want to listen to you and we want to work through these bodies of water today with you. Right. Um, I just know the one, the psychic, the Ronald King Lake, is the closest one to where he was last seen. Unconfirmed? Yeah is why we've been drawn to that one right now. Okay, and this is the Ross Lake? The Ronald King. Ron Ronald King. Is it public access that people go there and they fish or it's 100% private? It's private. It used to be um, public, like they had a shooting range back there and stuff, but the people bought it and closed it off. Okay, and so do they have a gate up? Do they have a chain up? And are we getting a vehicle to in be there? To honest, I don't think they have it blocked off. Okay. So, but I don't know. <laughs> so right now, in my opinion, that's the first location we go yeah. to. We were close to the road. I don't know how much of that you actually heard with the big trucks going by, but the short of it is, is we don't have an exact time frame as to what time he left here at the bar. I believe that Jeff left here on his own. There's some speculation whether or not somebody was in the vehicle with him, but nobody's ever come forward. Supposedly, you know, he said that he's going to go commit suicide. Nobody believed him. And in this situation, we find that nine times out of 10, that's exactly what happened. The one body of water that they had in question first, let me just bring this up. So here's where the bar is at. You guys can all see this. Here's Ronald's Lake over here. This one is kind of where Amelia would like us to go first and has come up in, in conversations, but the conversations that she's had has been with psychics. So I'm not a person who knows about psychic readings, but I do know that about like, you know, dowsing rods. I've, I've actually seen people use that method in several cases. And, you know, to be honest, this is going to be the first time I've ever seen this used in a cold case. We can learn a lot today, fine tune our skills because we have all the gear needed to find a missing person. So now we can learn all the tricks of the trade and then uh, possibly close some cases and bring some closure to these families. We have a shooting range. So they went up here a lot of times. And so we have one, uh, this one's too shallow, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six bodies of water up here at this location. Because they went out there and they went shooting quite often, there was no barrier. It sounds like there might be a chain across it right now. So I think that that's going to be the first location we need. just need to go hit. Let's just go drop it into different bodies of water. And the shooting range has a, you know, a, a significant meaning, you know, sentimental. He had an attachment to there. So he probably saw all the bodies of water over there in the first yeah, place. Yeah. Oh, he knows yeah. about them. Yeah, he's yeah, been out there yeah. quite often. I mean, they all make sense, but yeah. usually if there's like an emotional connection to something. That's where you go. Probably, you know, we, we've had that in several cases already. Based on our location, we're gonna have the more shallow pond off to the left in here. In fact, uh, let's do this. Josh still has the drone in the air. Let's just get a lay of the land and let's also see if anybody's up here by chance. That pond is way too shallow. Moss growing up everywhere. Just kind of go around it, make sure there's nothing that's hanging out in the water. What I'm looking for is any access into it, 
it looks shallow. As far as an entry point, I don't see the entry coming in over here just because that bottoms out and is shallow on that side where the road would have gone around it. And then we wanted to come check out like back here. There's supposed to be, there we go, there's the other one. So you can see the bottom over there. You have no access over here on the right to get into it. All right, so that other pond is covered in trees there. No access to it. And there should be another one here. The, oh, this one oh, looks- Oh, that one looks- That's pr super that's promising. Deep. That's deep right there. That's a quarry, a that drop a quarry, off. Yeah. Come off right off, off here. Oh yeah. This one I'm really interested in. Like, I want to get onto this one. But like, what if that was the truck right there? Like, what if we could see it? Yeah, I don't think that's the truck though. No, that's just a- Oh, that little thing right there? Oh, yeah, that one there. Yeah. But So it's not deep enough right here, but over here, definitely looks deep enough. I mean, look how dark that is in there. Oh yeah. Then if we take a look at it here, like is there a straight shot coming oh, in? Yeah. yeah, coming in off this road here. So if he came in here, he's gonna hit all those trees and all the brush, so he's not getting in there. But do we have an access point into the deepest part right here is what we're looking for. This one's in question, so I can't quite yeah. tell. The access has to be coming in right here, and I don't know if he's sneaking in through there. Too many trees. But I'm really, I mean, like I said, I'm really interested in that one. But then we have this one over here as well. And that one's a nice big drop off. Same thing with that one. You have too much to clear between here and there. Yeah. And all this is fresh for clearing. So I'm almost right now kind of going to rule all of these out based upon like this one not having regular access. All right, well, let's back up through here and let's head over to Ronald King Lake and see if we can gain access onto his property. Driving road here, completely gated. So you're not getting up to that one. That's private. So you don't have any access into there. And then you have the other pond that was just right here that was well gated and fenced in front of their house as well. Because this is their main gate coming up into here, one road in, and then it separates to take it into both of the, the ponds back there. And then you have the other pond that was just right here that was well gated and fenced in front of their house as well. And those are the ones that we were just at. So there's the quarry. So this, this is the deep quarry one. If you take a look at it on satellite here. But this one back here is your deepest, darkest, bluest one. They have now cleared all of this up here. So all of this has been cleared recently. And also I just now thought of this. Did we confirm it or know that Jeff was actually doing like farmhand work for this guy? Did we confirm that or no? I can't remember. The guy the mark. Yeah. So it's unconfirmed, but we did hear at the time Jeff was doing farmhand work for this guy. Okay, yeah. let, let me go focus on this one next. Okay. So I'll have everybody hang out at the bar while I roll into this one to get permission so we're not exciting them too much. Head north on Pleasant Grove Road. All right, where are we going now? Uh, so this is going to be three ponds behind the girlfriend's bar's parents' property. Your destination is on the left. So I think you actually have a fence all the way around these ponds. So you are not getting into any of those ponds right there. Hey, we're uh, in town investigating Jeff Shepard. Do you know him? Went missing uh, two years ago and there's a rumor that he might have done some uh, farmhand work over here. But yeah, it, now he did work for him. Okay. What's the uh, owner's name? Uh, Dwayne. All right, so we're gonna head back over to King's property area to mm -hmm. gain access onto that quarry. Yeah, we're working on the uh, Jeff Shepard missing persons case. Are you familiar with that? No, buddy, on the truth, I'm not. Right. I'm not. Is that here local? Yeah, so the, he went missing two years ago yeah. after getting in a fight at a bar. Yeah. And we have reason to believe that he may be in one of the ponds over there where the chicken coops are being built. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Wallace, I, I hate that bit of pest you there, but I'll make this quick. Uh, there's some folks here with this underwater dive team that's pulled in and uh, they're needing to uh, get in contact with Dwayne King here, go ahead. Hello Dwayne, Jared Lysak from Adventures with Purpose. Uh, thanks for taking my call. We certainly want to help the family, so that's it, bottom line. Uh, we will cooperate with you in any way we can. So I will call my son back, he will meet you at the gate. Is that okay? That's perfect, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No, no problem, have a good one, have right. a pleasure. Good luck to Th you, okay? Th thank you, bye-bye. I'm gonna let you all in and show you what I, what little I know, but you all can find out more, I'm sure by aerial and you can find the ponds. Yep. 
when you lock it back, if you don't care, when I leave, I'm going to dummy lock it. I'm going to make it look like to anybody else coming in that nobody's in there. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks for coming, Mr. Grubbs, Mr. Adam Brown. So whoever wants to, flip-flops, amazing. It's gonna be really muddy, supposedly, but we're gonna head back, we're gonna take a look at it, and then we can just kinda, of, we have four, five, six different bodies of water up here, and we can just all kinda of start separating and or work together, whatever you guys wanna do. So, but yeah, uh, and I'm gonna see if I can actually drive back there and not get stuck as well. So I'm gonna check out this road over here. So we have the other quarry that was here. Now, we have to keep in mind that this does not match the aerial view from even a year ago. So all this has been pushed out. So what we're looking for and at is any access points that would have been here two years ago to get a vehicle down through here. And so what I'm more interested in is not this side. The I, think, side. I think we would have had snap trees here from two years ago. So I don't feel like anything here went in I'm more interested in the deeper part over here on the left, if there's any access. Yeah, but it's only been two years. So, I mean, you're gonna notice broken branches and stuff and an actual road. So he's not gonna fight to get into this one. It's gonna be an easy access. Right now I'm writing this one off. If he's here, it's 100% foul play. You're not coming back here and killing yourself. Well, right now you're not even getting a truck did, in here. Did he own a gun? Yeah, yeah supposed, supposedly. Uh, it's an 80s model Ford. 1984 so. F-150, single yeah. cab. Stout, strong, made when things were made to last. So if it's if we find it, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, well let's um, check out that other one. But you gotta get back here to know. You don't know unless you, you get the boots on the ground. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing else over here. All right, let's go check out that other quarry pond over here. So here's where we were just at, verifying yeah. that one. This is the other one that we were gonna go check out. Yeah. But this is, I, I feel like, although they may have cleared this out recently, this is an older road. They've just been using it since. That takes us back here to this other one. And so this road has been here. If you look on the map here, okay, that comes back in here underneath the foliage, because then it's going to come up to this intersection, and then is that intersection going to drop down? We don't know. We don't go. All right. Let's go. But then there's a pond up here to the left as well, that's really secluded and up out of the way. So you do have tire rut tracks back here. See that there? Anything is a possibility unless we rule it out. Yeah. You can you can get a truck in here still. Oh no. You want to rule this out or you want to keep going? Um, I mean, we have to get there to see what's around it. Yeah. Careful. Careful. All right, so now you have a gate up here that's been there forever, but we're interested in the road on the other side of the gate that's going to take us to this other pond back here. Oh, I like this road a lot better here. And, 70... all, and all, all of our cars and water are places where people have gotten to. Some of them have been remote, but it's clear I can go there with ease, drive my car in, and it's over with. I agree with you 100%. I'm 75 yards from this one. Yeah. So just so we can say that we've looked at all of them and we've rolled right. them up. Right. And this is the road right here, right? Yep. This is the road that takes us straight to this one. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's like your only entry there. Too shallow. Let's we'll see if there's another entry on this side. All 
All right, well that officially marks two off of our list. Let's go check out that other one. I, I, I agree with you. However, like where, what, what is that sheen coming from? You see that? Something is in there not normal. That's not an algae bloom. That is... It's not giving me like a uh, rainbow sheen. That's just a one sheen consistency. It is some type of sheen. I get what you're saying though. Usually there's multiple colors. Right. I, I don't know what that is. But something, something would have to disturb it in order for it to be an actual oil sheen coming up right now. Okay. It doesn't smell like it. And if it was oil, it would, you know, it would be... It would have a scent. Yeah. It would be on these built up here. I don't know. It just looked weird. Okay, so 84 pickup is not going through there. I mean, it can. can it I, can. I can go in through right, there, but you're right. going to have indentations of the ground, especially in March. And in and, and, and going in, you're going to be doing it aggressive. You're going to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they're going into the uh, pond on the north side. So they must have identified enough of an access that gives them probable cause where a vehicle may have gone in. But uh, then again, we were thought about the Cumberland River. It opens you up to the entire state at this point. So the sure. reservoir would be our next option to put a boat in, right? Yeah, that's six miles. Oh, 100%, go hit that. We'll wrap up here. We'll check out this other pond, but uh, I think that yeah. makes perfect sense as well if it's only six miles from his house. Do you have the new Solux? Uh, no, it's Garmin's. Well, that one's cleared. And right here by the boat ramp. There's no vehicles here. It's about five to six feet right here. Yeah. And then out here it's 20, but there's no vehicles out here. It's a nice okay. location. Beautiful lake. I love that it's only electric motors. <laughs> it keeps it nice and peaceful. Yeah. Cleared this area and there's no other access. All right. Yeah, so really just need to clear the... Yeah, they did. That over there, like where the van is at and come in. Almost. Oh, all right. So where do we go from here? That's the question. And then his house up there. Now, do we have any other bodies of water on the way to his house that he would have potentially crossed over? Treat this as the how intoxicated was he? Do we have any information on that? We've heard conflicting stuff. Like the girlfriend says he was wasted, couldn't stand up. The bartender at Missy said he was fine. Okay. So Doug. Um, um, he actually lived further to the north of here as well. So I'm in looking- Kentucky? In Kentucky. So I'm looking at a new five mile radius from okay. his home as far as any potential bodies of water is what we're looking at right now. But, you know, looking at, are there any potential accident scenes? So then my question just now also is, would he have ended up over by the airport for any reason? Because the airport has a couple of bodies of water over here. Mm -hmm. If he would have taken airport road up and then back on William Burgett's house. But she says that is not the direction that he would have ever gone because the truck was such a gas hog. Yeah, he was frugal on gas. Yeah. So are there any other, like, hey, I know this body of water is here. It's just an easy, let me go just check out. Okay, we just got nothing. I don't know where else to go for you guys. Well, I'm either. I mean, other than this place that he went fishing, you know, there's Alum that he went fishing, which is right past her house. 
And I mean, it, it's a boat ramp right on the Cumberland River. Um, probably, I don't know, 15 miles from here. Okay. But other than that, I don't know anywhere else that, I mean, he could have drove his truck off into the water at. Okay, so, so, we, so we just introduced a new spot where he went fishing. Any other spots he went fishing. So we have this one, that one, and then we had the potential chicken coop or chicken barn area that we were just at. We had Rogers King Lake or whatever that was that we that we marked off because it's horse property, fence, attorney Dwayne. So that one's off the off the list. And then Dave's property is also off the list because of all the old fencing that's around it and the gates that were around it and his house is right there in front of it where the truck yard was at that he used to do farm hand work. Okay, so then that brings us back to just the one potential more for a fishing spot. Do we know of any other fishing spots? Uh, you said up on the Cumberland, 15 miles, 15 okay, minutes from here. So, see right there's the river. Yeah. But, um, Amelia, come over here and show him where this is your neck of the woods. You might be able to find it easier, which road it is. I can't remember the road name, but it's a straight shot. Right here is Marsha Siding. You want satellite view or you want this view? Satellite. So, okay. I don't know how she does anything All right. like that. There you go. But right here is Marsha's Corner Market. Yep, and right there. So it's this road, right? Yep. 700. It's road 700. It's a big south fork road, but it's a black top road. Okay. And you just follow it all the way down to the boat dock. It's not far. No, but that road's kind of... It's curvy, but it's not far. Okay. So, so, and really, he would have just made a left here instead of making a right to go home, if this is what he wanted to do. He would have went straight at the red lights oh that he would have turned at to go home, mm -hmm. and just went up to the caution light, I think is what it is, and made a left. Okay, I'm not showing where the road is. So, oh, 700 goes this way. Okay. And do we have a boat ramp over here? Yeah. It's at the end of the road. The road ends at the water. Yeah. Okay. We're going to head there next. So, you're welcome to go with us or have a little conversation with them as well and see if anything else makes sense or if they're going to head out there as well. Okay. Let them know this is where we're heading. Yes. Let's give you guys a in-depth sonar overview. Before we can read sonar, you have to be going the appropriate speed. Right now, we're going downstream with the current. So once we're going the appropriate speed, 1.9 to 2.5, we can accurately know exactly what it is we're looking at. Over here, we have Garmin Live Scan. Live Scope is gonna show us exactly what's underneath the boat in live time. It's gonna project it here, kind of like a 3D image. Over here on the Hummingbird Solix 12, we have our down imaging. A down imaging is a picture in time. It's showing what we just went past. See, I can scroll over, I can see what we've gone over the entire trip. Also, down here, we have side scan. Side scan is gonna be casting 75 feet in each direction. Right here it says 74. The black part that you see at the moment is gonna be water column. The boat icon stands for the boat in our line of travel. The black represents the distance between the boat and the bottom of the river, which is 18 feet. 18 feet, 18 feet. And anything that we see here, we can reference in the side scales to show exactly how big an object is. And again, once we're going the right speed, 
we can determine exactly what an object is. And then we'll put a magnet on it to see what, if it's a vehicle or not. The other thing that we have to think about and take into consideration is we're dealing with when Jeff went missing, it was March. What was the water conditions in March? See, this is why we take our trips in, at the end of the year in September, October, is because the water conditions and the water levels down. If you look where the bank actually was, it was up another 10 feet. With more water, that means that there was more flow coming through here as well. And with more flow, then we end up with a situation similar to the Missouri River with John Zarkowski to where he ended up 700 plus yards downstream, which is then going to take us down to that rock, probably not around the bend, but into that corner is where I'm going to say the farthest point is going to be for a vehicle. We have this bend and then one more bend to the boat ramp. Okay, I have something right. Okay, I've got something right here. I don't know what that is. Might be a boat. Let's see if I can find it again. Okay, it's off to the left just a little bit. Yep, has an outboard on it. It's John boat with an outboard. It's uh, so you can look. So I'm gonna park right over the top of it. It's 20 foot long. Yep. So if you look at that, you see the uh, on the left the 10 foot mark, and then on the right it's right between the five and 10. So the boat is roughly. 17 foot long. So we have four, four things that are down there. Are you serious? That I'm interested in. Yeah, I mean, I'm really not sure what we have down there. So we got to hit it at some more angles to see. Over here, see how those are really consistent and square? So I don't believe that that's a vehicle. I don't even know if it's a boat. And then you have this as well, and that's not consistent with the vehicle either. Nikki and Amelia and Jacob, they're all looking at some additional bodies of water that would potential. And there's one about 20 feet off the road that's a pond. Sheriff is friends or knows the guy, and so the sheriff is there working with, and they got Jacob permission. Amazing. So right now, Jacob's blowing up his boat and just checking that as one last location before the sun goes down. Hey, Jared. Josh Shepard. Josh, pleasure to meet you. Doug. Josh. But, uh, and you're, jo you're Jeff's brother? Jeff's brother. I'm the youngest one, the only one. Okay. Uh, Amelia's husband? Yep. Okay. That's, that's my wife. So, so but, you, you heard that they're over at one more pond right now? Yeah, they're over towards, uh, what's the name of that? It's the, actually the old Pinot Raceway. That's the other pond down there at the state line. See, at the current time when Jeff went missing, this place wasn't wet. So it didn't turn wet till about two years ago. Okay. So, you know, whenever he went missing, he would always go down the state line, buy beer, and, you know, do his run of the evening because he liked to hang out at the bars. Mm -hmm. Well, that night that he went missing, he never returned. You know, it's March 12th, three years ago. But uh, he was running around the bars, supposed to come home that night. Never seen him. Right. But I told her then, I said, it's going to happen. He's going to disappear. Yeah. And where he went that night, I do not know. And, you know, I'm a mechanic myself, so I've done, as soon as he went missing, the junkyards, scrap yards, everything, I was looking for that truck. Yeah. You know, if I see that truck, I'll know that truck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've had all of them searching. So, you, in order to get rid of a truck, you either got to cut it up, bury it, or put it in water. Right. That's the three. I don't know. I really don't know if I ever know, but 
got to keep trying. Yeah. That's all you can do. Keep faith. Up. But I yep. really do appreciate you boys coming out and doing what you've done today. And yep. Help me out. I really do. Because, you know, there's a lot of things a lot of people can't do. You know what I mean? At least, you know, you're able to get down there and check. So. Yeah. But at least now we know he ain't here, he ain't there, he ain't there. You know. All right. So we can start putting targets other places and keep looking. Yeah. So. So it's answers, you know, not the answer we want yet, but it's an answer. It's so. an answer. So All you right. guys keep marking them off your list. Awesome. Again, thank you. Nice Boys, meeting you. I appreciate you. you. Yeah. Really do. Y'all be careful heading back. All right. Y'all need anything? You know where to call, where to get a hold of me. All right. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. Y'all be careful. All right.